Coming to the Salter Harris classification for growth plate injuries in children. I will tell you a way how to understand this in a simple way. Salter Harris type 1 is a slip of epiphysis type 1. Salter Harris type 2 is a slip along with a metaphysical part. It is the commonest type. It is also called as Thurston Holland type. They will ask you this question. Commonest, commonly asked. Salteris type 3 is a split of epiphysis into two parts. Salteris type 4 is a split of epiphysis along with the metaphysis. And type 5 is a vertical crushing injury where the growth plate gets damaged. 5, 5. Physis gets damaged. Type 1, look here carefully. You can write a 1. Type 2, you can write a 2. Type 3, you can write a 3. Type 4, you can write a 4. Boom. That's how you get it in your head. Practice. Teach your friends your girlfriends, your boyfriends, you will never forget it. But, practice. Commonest, type 2. Maximum chances, type 2. Now, when we look at the joints, important joints in the body are ball and socket joints. Ball and socket joints will allow the movement in multiple planes. Two important ball and socket joints we will all know hip and shoulder. But then you need to remember two more which are very commonly asked. One is talocalcaneo navicular and second is in the ear in coast hips. Remember two movements which define that the shoulder and hip are normal are abduction and interrogation. If these two movements are complete, full, it means shoulder and hip are normal. This is an example how they show you internal rotation. They will get the leg out, but the thigh goes in. This is internal rotation. If this movement is okay, very high indicator, hip is normal. If you get the leg in, thigh goes out, external rotation. Not of much significance. Now, two movements which occur at the top of the skeleton. First joint in the human body, atlanto-occipital joint. It teaches you to nod like this. Means you are saying yes. This is flexion extension view. And the second joint in human body is atlanto axial. Between C1, C2, you say no. So the first movement, flexion extension, atlanto occipital. Second, left, right, or yes, no, atlanto axial. They are very commonly asked. Let's look at the x rays. As long as this branch stays, X-rays are the core of it. If you can understand the radiographs well, you can diagnose many conditions and treat them properly. X-rays do talk about bones. A bone in the center has a marrow and on the periphery has a cortex. Cortex is a thicker, stronger bone and break in the cortex is called the fracture. Fracture is not break in the bone. Fracture is break in the cortex of the bone. Further, most of the diseases in human body, they start right in the center, bone marrow. Outside it, you have the muscle layer and the fat layer. And in between, you have a layer of fascia. This Muscle and fat layer is called as a soft tissue plane. Whenever there is a swelling in the limb, 
like infections, these soft tissue planes will merge into each other. This loss of soft tissue plane takes about 24 hours. So in first 24 hours, the x-rays are normal. More than 24 hours, there is loss of soft tissue plane, one of the earliest x-ray feature of osteomyelitis. And the third thing which it can tell you about is joint space. Joint space is filled up with cartilage. Cartilage is radiolucent, I told you this. So, when you have a decreased joint space, it means the cartilage is getting destroyed. It means we are dealing with arthritis. One more thing that x-ray can show you, anything which is radio opaque. Glass pieces are coated with lead at the back. That is why x-ray is often the first investigation to pick up the glass pieces. Look at this. What is this? Knee joint. Largest joint in human body. Which is this bone? Many will think it's femur. It's not. Femur is here. This is petala, my friends. This is petala. Tibia. Fibula. What goes here? Common peroneal nerve. When you look at the space here, the lateral joint space, middle joint space, equal. But here, look at this. The middle joint space is decreased, causing the leg to go medially. When the distal to the joint, for example, elbow, cubitus, the forearm and the wrist goes medial to the joint, cubitus varus. When they go out, cubitus valgus. Similarly, if you look here, cubital varus, genu varum, genu is knee, genu varum, the leg and the feet, they go medially. So in genu varum, you can make an O in between, O for osteoarthritis, whereas genu valgum, will make a R in between. So, genuvarum, osteoarthritis, genuvalgum, rheumatoarthritis, more common. So, this is how it goes, O in between, O, R in between, RA. What have we learned? Break in the cortex is fracture, osteomyelitis, loss of soft tissue planes will be seen after 24 hours. So, periosteal reaction, we will talk about it, takes time to come. TB, you know the soft tissue planes, the soft tissue changes, whenever you have a spine, you have curvatures, cervical spine goes in, called as cervical lordosis, thoracic comes out, thoracic kyphosis, lumbar goes in, lumbar lordosis. Whenever there is a disease of spine, this curvature will be lost, called as loss of curvature of spine, which you will see earlier than the loss of this space. And then, remember, joint space, the space between the joint, is made of cartilage, not picked up on x-rays. Reduced joint space is called as arthritis. Coming to specific areas radiology, when you look at the shoulder, the highest bony landmark on the shoulder is the clavicle. Clavicle is the commonest bone to fracture, the highest bony landmark. In shoulder, you have a large head on a glenoid. The ratio is 4 is to 1. This is called as a golf ball. Golf ball on a T. T means stand. Now, when you look at the bone just beneath the clavicle, the infraclavicular area, it is called as coracoid process. And that's so important because a lot of incisions of the shoulder area, coracoid is the landmark to go anteriorly. So in shoulder, remember 4 is to 1 ratio, ball and socket joint, coracoid is in the infraclavicular area. That's how it looks like. 
clavicle is the highest bony landmark. This is what they will show you a scapula, mark the structures. This is what is so important. Clavicle, infraclavicular area, coracoid. They love coracoid, they love subscapularis. So when we look at elbow, elbow is mainly an humero ulnar joint. So this is capitulum which articulates with the radial head. You have the external epicondyle, also called as the lateral epicondyle, the internal epicondyle, also called as the medial epicondyle, the medial part of lower end humerus, trochlea, and the olecranon. And the mnemonic is crito. The age of ossification of these is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12 years. So capitulum is the earliest to come, followed by radial head, internal epicondyle, trochlea, olecranon and lateral epicondyle is the last one to come. This is something very very valuable. It is asked very commonly. Most commonly they throw an arrow on capitulum and ask you the age or what center is it. Coming to the wrist, which is a radiocarpal joint. Every student of MBBS must know that in AP view, it is the lower end of radius which is wider. On it, there is a boat shaped bone called a scaphoid which sleeps. Next to it is the moon shaped lunate. It doesn't look like a moon obviously on the AP view, but when you see the lateral view, the lunate looks crescentric like a moon. Also remember, the first metacarpal goes anterior. That's the rule. And classically, we had done that. She looks too pretty. Try to catch her. So this is a mnemonic we learned for carpal bones. I'm just telling you a different way to remember. Scaphoid and 5, S and 5, they look like same. So age of falsification of scaphoid is 5 years. The total of lunate triquetral is equal to pisiform. It goes in the descending order. 4, 3. So 5 plus 4 plus 3, 12. Scaphoid, lunate, triquetral, total 12. And then trapezium and trapezoid because you are trying to focus on she is 5 and 5 and the total of second row is also equal to basic form that is 12. So 5 and 5 is 10 so here let me 1 and 1. Now here capitate is the first one to ossify amongst the two and it also happens to be the largest carpal bone. C for carpal, C for capitate. It is the first to ossify and is the largest carpal bone. Coming to the pelvis. Pelvis, remember the obturator forearm. Remember the head with the acetabulum. But most importantly, remember the sacroiliac area. This SI joint, when it's inflamed, it's called a sacroiliitis. You will have a young man, low backache, Reduced chest expansion, HLA B27 positive. Your answer is going to be ankylosing spondylitis. This is what you should remember. This is what is SI joint.